Hello, everyone. Thank you again for joining us for our continued AdviseCon webinar series. Today, we're responding to questions we're hearing from the community of practice. I hear about these two tools, Project Online and Project Operations. Break it down for us. What are some pros and cons? Why should I be using one over the other? Let's get into it. Here at AdviseCon, we help organizations achieve greater impact by leveraging work management technologies to accomplish more with less. As work management consultants and technology specialists, our focus is on streamlining processes, improving systems, and achieving better outcomes. Looking at today's agenda, we'll talk about what is a project's execution culture look like? How, how do you know if you're really performing really well when it comes to executing projects? Then we'll go and compare and contrast these two tools that we have in front of us today. I'll dive deeper into the features and benefits of project operations. And then finally, we'll bottom line it. Why should you be using one tool over the other? A little bit about myself. My name is Sean. I'm a project advisor here at AdviseCon. I do have a background in math education. Of course, we all know that means I've just got a lot of problems. I do have experience in implementing 365 as solutions for customers, and I have over decades worth of experience delivering instruction and training. I am a PMP. I'm also certified in Teams, and I'm a semi-professional dad joke teller. So, for example. I asked my students, name a country that has no R in its name. One of my students raised their hand and said, no way. All right, let's look into what is a mature project execution culture. We're gonna take a look at one measure of an organization's execution culture, and that starts with the project management office, also known as the PMO. And there are five different factors or aspects that were measured, and I'll, I'll break them out for us. First, a good project execution culture has good governance around their projects. The PMO is brought into the entire organization a strategy. PMO is not just the, the group that gets it done after it's been, uh, after an engagement has been agreed upon, uh, but th they are the ones who actually are strategic partner who, who give feedback to, to the uh, leadership team, to sales, to finance about, well, how can things improve? So PMO is not siloed, it's actually folded into how th things are done, the governance uh, at an organization. Furthermore, the uh, projects in an organization, they are aligned with the strategy of the organization. And that involves integration and alignment. They're not just one-offs. They have a strong alignment to your goals, whether they be one year, five year, 10 year, and so on. Thirdly, these top 10 percenters, and that's who we're really we're looked at, with the top 10% of PMOs have processes that were consistent yet flexible. Now that sounds like a contradiction or an oxymoron, but that is, I'll, I'll break that out as to why those two things can uh, coexist, but these processes are really nailed down, solidified for the organization. Fourth, technology and data was a, was a crucial part of these uh, top 10 percenters. A thing, for example, uh, they chose tech that enhance collaboration and decision making. Uh, sometimes organizations choose tech that is maybe the new hot thing, or you know they heard from another group that's using it, and so they want to just copy exactly without a, a, taking a look at what is going to be best for my organization to enhance its collaboration and again decision making. And lastly. What mature top 10% of PMOs do is that they grow professionals into leaders. They see people as a crucial part of their strategy. Um, again, it's not just about getting things done. It's about how does this align with our, our, our plans in the, in the short term, long term, and then being able to have processes, again, that are consistent, high quality, but also they can be flexible. I want to dive deeper into processes. When you look deeper into the, uh, the literature provided by this study, these words you see on screen are consistently mentioned. Structure, policies, procedures, methodology, standards, framework, and quality. You know, these really form the backbone of an organization, and they solidify, as, as you see there, the process. 
Now, how can how can consistency and flexibility exist together? Well, when you do when you know a process, you can see it mapped out maybe, just like an engine. And when you know one part is not going to work for some reason, um, in fact, you know much of these studies came out of uh, what happened after the uh, the COVID pandemic. The processes can be so well mapped out that you can swap pieces in and out when one piece doesn't work, just like uh, an engine. Again, that's not working. Let me take that one out, put a new one in. That's not working. Let me uh, reconfigure this so that I know how to get from A to B from start to end, uh, but I still have that framework. So that's what's really going to help you do projects well is this process. Solidifying a process allows a tool to come alongside, and here's the important thing, support the process. Often tools are selected because they are supposed to be the process. Within your organization, the selection of your tools should support the process. Tools serve best when they support a well-defined framework that enhances, encourages, solidifies, streamlines your processes. All right, so now let's dive deeper. We, we talked about process um, as and why that's important to an organization. Now we're gonna look at the two tools, Project Online and Project Operations. We're gonna compare them with three different aspects, process, focus, and team. Let's get into it. When we start with Project Online, three aspects that I want to look at are how does your team currently, when select, if you were to select Project Online, how does your process currently defined? Is it is the developing to developed area that would best fit Project Online? Project Online, in, in terms of these aspects on screen, really focus on project execution. The team will, you, is, is definitely when you need cross-functional resources. Uh, for example, if you just have a silo team, a, a one group team, maybe Project Online isn't the tool for you. But when you start to grow to a complex project with cross-functional resources, that's when Project Online uh, becomes the tool for you. Let's contrast that with Project Operations. Project Operations is for the very developed, in the first, as the first box there, the first aspect, very developed organization that knows their process well. Secondly, their focus is instead of being on project execution, it's on an engagement execution. They look broader beyond the project and look at the engagement. And that involves sales to finance. That's what I mean by engagement. Thirdly, it's not just a cross-functional team with a project manager, account manager, and resources. Rather, it goes from to the whole organization. Sales managers gets included, uh, C CEOs, CXOs, and then even, again, supported by finance. If you look at the graphic on the bottom, notice that project operations, it's not a new, new or different scheduling tool. It is based on the same scheduling engine that you have come to enjoy and maybe uh, want to enjoy with Project Online. Again, it's not just about getting projects done with project operations. It considers the entire engagement. But again, when deciding which tool you want, remember the tool is only going to support or is only as good as your process. So make sure you've got that defined first. All right, let's dive deeper into project operations and look at its features and benefits. First of all, project operations sits as one of the many tools, one of the many pieces on the Dynamics 365 arsenal of business applications. The schedule engine and interface is the is exactly the same as project for the web. So you get to enjoy those same assignment features of resources, uh, durations, dates, though, and that comfort uh, of understanding it there. But because it sits in the Dynamics 365 platform, it has seamless integration, both upstream and downstream with its with the other business applications on the 360, Dynamics 365 platform. Many organizations solve this problem of an entire engagement using multiple, often siloed tools. Many organizations overcome that silo with uh, API connectors. 
but often that leads to questionable data movement, one, and two, data accuracy. When you put all your business applications in one platform, you're increasing the accuracy as well as reducing any concern or worry. If you start all the way upstream with sales, Dynamics 365 sales piece, it, you can generate quotes from uh, creating a, a work breakdown structure, and then you can create tasks and durations and even assign generic resources so that really you have an accurate schedule. You don't have to uh, put too much uh, fluff in the quote. You can give an accurate uh, to the hour quote. Now that when, when you win that quote, it moves downstream and you can start to actually assign uh, actual named resources using the field service module. You can search your pool of resources to skills as well as availability. And again, look at how seamlessly we're moving downstream with the quote to assigning resources. And then again, we move into planning and executing the engagement. But all that info that came from the quote moves right down the line ensuring an accurate delivery. And then as the engagement gets completed, uh, timesheets are updated, materials and things like that get put into uh, final costing. We have seamless flow of data from the start to the end so that finance can accurately bill. Furthermore, the Dynamics 365 finance piece is IFRS compliant. And if I said this once, I've said it three times, Tools support the process. You have to have a good defined process uh, if you're going to start using these tools. And really, th then these pieces flow well together. To summarize the features and benefits, project operations is just the execution piece of the Dynamics 365 platform. If you are ready and know how things get done from beginning to end within your organization, the project operations might be something you would consider. Furthermore, not all organization types are best fit project operations. Service-oriented organizations, as opposed to products, best fit project operations. Groups like consultants, engineering, and accounting. All right, so we've heard features and benefits. We've compared and contrasted tools. Let's bottom line it. What, when should I use project operations? When should I use project online? When thinking about the bottom line, it's always good to go back to the beginning, the, uh, the father of modern project management, Peter Drucker, who said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Now, what does that mean? That no matter how much strategy planning you do, you, put the, you pick the best tools, if your culture does not know process, does not support process, does not live and breathe that process, it's it's the, the strategy, the tools you choose aren't worth much. So really, it's all about process. Let your process be supported by a tool. Pick a tool based on your development of your organization's process. If your group is mostly focused on the project execution right now and don't have the process well-defined from start to end, consider just using project online. When, you, when your entire organization can map out its process, that's when project operations is a good tool to come in and support the entire engagement, again, from start to end. Thank you for watching this webinar. Please feel free to reach out with any questions, like or follow us on our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We offer many free trainings in our online academy. You can access those by visiting advisacon.thinkific.com. For project managers, simply become a member of Advisacon Academy to receive the code to redeem PDUs. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.